Do you have some shade? Good afternoon. Oh, well, it's almost afternoon. Uh, provide you a brief update on the patients that we've received. Our count of patients still stands at three. I can give you some details about our uh, first patient arrived at 8:12 a.m. at our League City Campus Hospital and was transferred to Galveston subsequently for care in our Level One Trauma Center. At 8:31 a.m., our first patient arrived uh, by helicopter from um, the site. Um, he's currently in the operating room and in critical condition. The first patient that arrived at League City is in uh, good condition, but she's also in the OR at this time. And then the uh, patient who's under 18 is still in our hospital on the pediatric floor. Has uh, patient male confirmed? Yes. The, lot, the, six, the younger patient is a male. And can you confirm that he is a student? I, I do not know that information. But was involved with the Yes, he came from that area. Based on the wounds, do you have any idea of the, of the type of gun? I, I, I don't have that information. I can tell you that uh, the male patient that's in the operating room had a gunshot wound to the arm. The male patient that's under 18 had a gunshot wound to the leg. And the female patient who's in the operating room had a gunshot wound to the leg also. Do you see the male in, in surgery right now had a gunshot wound to the arm? Yes. Not the chest? Not the no. Chest. It was close to his chest. Close, close. So upper arm, yes. Is he still in the operating Yes. Room? Yes. In surgery? Yes. How many, how long has surgery been? Uh, uh, we have no idea how long his surgery will be. He did, he did suffer a significant blood loss, and that's why he's in critical condition. Are the other two patients uh, scheduled to undergo surgery? The, the female um, who's middle-aged is in the OR now uh, with her leg wound, and the 16-year-old, I don't think we anticipate that he will need to go to the operating room. Is the 16-year-old awake, talking? I have not seen him, so I do not know. Okay. And what about the woman? She's in the OR. She's been taken to the OR. Okay. Prepping for surgery? Yes. I don't have the details about his exact injury other than it's a wound to the leg. Do you know the ages of the adults? They're middle-aged adults. I do not have the specific ages. Is it like between 20s and 30s? Or 30s I think higher, probably um, 30s, 50s. 50. And all three patients came from Santa Fe High School, is that right? The, the first patient arrived at our League City Hospital. She was taken, from what I understand, by her husband in a private automobile to League City and then transferred here by ambulance for our level one trauma center. The helicopter brought the second patient from the scene and then the, the third patient arrived by ambulance from the scene. Do you anticipate receiving any more patients at this time? We have not heard that we will be receiving more patients, tragically. Our, our staff are busy taking care of these patients and are standing by ready for other patients to come in. That's what's going on in there right now. I think there are a lot of personal feelings that people are having. Um, as a father of a 16-year-old at Friendswood High School, this hurts. I know earlier you were getting choked up as well. Kind of tell us what's going through your mind. I mean, I think everyone is feeling the way you're feeling right now. Just, you know, it's a horrible tragedy. Our hearts go out to those folks in Santa Fe and the high school students and their teachers and their administration. And we're doing the best we can to be a community partner to take care of them. And I think, you know, we're going to continue to do that. And that's what we're here for. And that's that makes me feel better about being able to do that. When you say that you were waiting for more patients, hoping, I mean, tragically, of course, meaning, you know, we don't. We, we haven't heard, um, you know, no, there's, at the time, were you oh, word and yes, okay. we, we were um, understanding that there would be additional patients. So we made ourselves ready. Have any of the relatives showed up already here? 
there have been some relatives who've shown up, some who don't have uh, students here or patients here, uh, but they uh, don't know where to go. So, you know, that information about the uh, Family Reunification Center at the Alamo Gym in Santa Fe is very important for uh, parents to understand that that's probably the best location to go to locate a child. No, we haven't. We've uh, gotten um, support or um, offers of support from colleagues like MD Anderson have called and said, if you need us, we can come help you. Uh, but we haven't talked to hospitals that have received other patients. So you recently completed a crisis site drill here? We do drills uh, probably quarterly uh, at UTMB to keep our level one trauma center status intact. Um, it's sort of an expectation that we uh, practice um, for these sorts of situations. So that's why we're good at it, well, that's when we're ready at all times. Could you briefly describe just for the viewers what a level, level one designation? There's, sure. A level one trauma center in our nation, there are four levels of trauma centers. Level one is the highest level. It means that um, surgeons are always available, that blood products are always available, that ORs are always available and ready to take a patient into them. That, that's a level one trauma center. So there's lesser degrees of resources available at the lesser ranked ERs. Are we the closest level one trauma center to the Santa Fe High School? Yes. There are three level one trauma centers in the Houston Galveston area, Memorial Hermann, Ben Taub, and UTMB. Have you spoken to the youngest one and has he told you what it was like in there? I have not spoken to any of the patients. Uh, there's a mobile blood bank set up if people are thinking about donating. What's your message to them? MD Anderson is bringing their mobile blood van to be in front of our Jenny Seeley Hospital. They'll be there at 1130. They're going to set up and take blood donations today, and then if we need them to come back tomorrow, they'll be available to, tomorrow. And you guys have used the house? Yes. Yeah. No, I think uh, uh, what Dr. Marshall said, that we have uh, one patient who is critical and actively going surgery. The other two um, are stable and are in fair condition. Can we ask, are those bullet wounds shotgun wounds or they pellet? Like, we're hearing different things. I'm not aware of that at this time. How long has a critical patient been in surgery now? Uh, it's difficult for me to give the estimate, but in our next update, we can provide that information. How, uh, how are surgeons feeling? Are, are they feeling you know, good about what's happening in that surgery room right now with this patient? I know that's hard to tell. So he, he is critically ill and he is stable. Critically ill but stable in the OR. How many surgeons are there in the I'm not aware of the actual number of surgeons in there. Do you know if uh, any of the law enforcement have been able to interview or get information from any of the patients here? I'm not aware of that information. Yeah, on another note, they've uh, located know some ancillary explosive devices and they're trying to render those make them inert Are you all still in the state of readiness could that uh, situation uh, magnify absolutely so as dr marshall suggested we are level one trauma center we have adequate number of staff and resources available to take care of those patients if the need arise and you said that earlier you have none of you guys have met with the actual patients right no no you have not At some point, I hope to be able to, to go by and see the patients, but that may not be today. Is one of them a police officer? That is our understanding. Wait, so you can confirm that the patient that's in critical condition is the resource officer that was shot at Santa Fe? Is that what you guys have That's our understanding. Uh, when I don't know his technical status. But he was one of the officers. That's my understanding. Uh, when will the next briefing be? Uh, we can ask uh, Mr. Reyes. Raul, yes. when will be our next briefing be? We're, we're talking about 3 o'clock, and we're thinking about a better location where you all can get better sound also. Uh, we'll let you all know, but probably somewhere in front of Jenny Seeley Hospital or maybe inside the hospital itself. That's where it will be at 3 Maybe. I'll, I'll let you guys know. We're, we're about to decide, yeah. make a decision in a while. We'll let you all know to make a better locale for everyone.
Gentlemen, before you go, can I get a spelling, uh, correct spelling each, each one of your names, please? David Marshall, D-A-V-I-D-M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L. Gulshan Sharma, G-U-L-S-H-A-N-S-H-A-R-M-A. Can you say your name? Mr. Marshall. I'm sorry? sorry. Your name one more time. David Marshall, D-A-V-I-D-M-A-R-S-H-A-L-L. Have you been, been in communication with your daughter at Brentwood High School to see kind of to console her and find out, you know, how things are going over there in the community? By text. I communicated with my daughter at Friendswood. Told her I loved her and that I wanted to hug her. And she did one of those little heart emojis on it, so. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you.